focus on the research that we have done. I am currently president of the Canadian Radiation Protection Association and just come off an eight-year term with the International Radiation Protection Association's Executive Council. As you see on the slide, that's a big organization representing 60 countries with about 20,000 members. All right, enough about me. What do you think? So I say the word radiation, and we'll pick on this victim here. What do you think when I say radiation? He thinks we're bombarded with it and we're living with it. What do you think? He thinks he's absolutely right. What do you think? She thinks it's invisible and we need to protect ourselves against it. What do you think? She thinks of CAT scans. Are you prejudiced against dogs? <laughs> what do you think? He thinks dental x-rays. I'm, I'm going to go further back now. What do you think? He has no idea. Wonderful. You're going to learn something today. What do you think? What's the one on the left? It's a mushroom towel from a nuclear explosion. It's either an A-bomb or an H-bomb. They're both big. The one on the right is a dirty bomb, which is what we're currently concerned with for terrorist actions. In fact, when I saw the Boston bombings, and I watched the smoke coming out near the finish line, I thought, I wonder if there's any, any radioactivity in there. And I was thinking from my, from my perspective, on how people might get contaminated. What's this one? I heard Fukushima. No. Good try, though. It's Chernobyl. It's Chernobyl. That's unfair. You're Russian. <laughs> yes, it is. And you can see the reactor in the background. What's this? Why is he there? Uh, a bit more specific, yeah, radiation. Spider. It was a radioactive spider, yes. See how it gets into our popular culture? What's this? Some of you will have used it. I used it. It was to see how your shoes fit. That's right. You put your feet down in the hole in the bottom, and somebody looks in the top, and they see your feet wiggling in the shoes, and how good the shoe fit. Uh, long gone now. What's this? Why is it there? Keep us warm. Yeah, that's not the answer. It does keep us warm. The reality of it is it keeps us warm. Why does it keep us warm? What's going on? It's a fusion reactor. Yeah, it is. Anybody know what that one is? And don't say x-ray. Don't say x-ray. What is it? It is an x-ray, but what is it? It's a hand, yes. Whose hand? Runkin's wife, yes. When was it taken? 1896. I think it was 1859. When she saw it, her comment was, I have seen my death. Although it was in German. But yes, that's her hand. And the big lump there is not a, a cancer, it's her rib. What did they go to deep in town? Who's that? Oh, the Russian uh, Yeah. I don't remember his name. Alexander Litvinenko. Why aren't I put him up when we're talking about radiation? Because he's a hero. No, he's not a hero. He was a very unfortunate man who was poisoned. He was poisoned by radioactive polonium, polonium-210. And actually, although that took place in London, England, there was a response in Canada. Uh, in fact, we dealt with about 300 phone calls, people being concerned that they had traveled on the same planes, same routes, were those planes contaminated. And in fact, some of the planes were contaminated. Uh, although, when the British investigated how contaminated those planes had been, they found out it was a common practice in the airlines to move seats from plane to 
plane and even into storage. So hunting down the seats that had been on the affected planes turned out to be a real challenge. Interesting or interestingly though, with poor Alexander here, who was massively, massively contaminated with colonial 210, the standard protective equipment used by the nurses and the doctors, and at this time, they didn't know what was killing him. In fact, it was only discovered after he died what it was. So while they were treating him for whatever they thought he had, and it wasn't radiation, their standard PPE gear protected them, and very little cross-contamination occurred amongst the nursing and medical staff. Why is this here? Apart from the fact that I'm trying to make you hungry. Why is this here? Potassium is radioactive. Potassium is found in bananas. It's found in watermelon. In fact, if you have a truckload of bananas going through a portal monitor looking for terrorist activities, it'll alarm it. There's enough potassium in a truckload of bananas to alarm these portal monitors. Brazil nuts also contain potassium and radium. And the potassium chloride water softener crystals obviously have radioactive potassium in them. In fact, if you go into a store where they have a pile of these with a radiation meter, you'll see an elevation in the background dose rate from the, that pile of potassium sitting in the store. Why is that there? Why are there mines? It's an aurora borealis. Why is it there? It's radioactive, yes. <laughs> We're all talking radiation, so why did I put it there? It's it's no. No, do I hear anything else? Solar flare. Solar flare, well, yeah, kind of. Actually, the reason I put that there is because when cosmic rays bombard the Earth, they actually make radioactive materials in the upper atmosphere. Uh, two things that are made in the upper atmosphere, carbon-14 and tritium are made by cosmic ray bombardments. Okay, so the definition of radiation. It is simply the process of transfer, transferring energy from one place to another. That's it. That's the definition of radiation. So it covers all of the things I've got up on the screen. Radio waves, microwaves, I know you were probably all thinking, oh, gamma rays and x-rays and other horrible things like that. Well, radiation is more than that. It's all of it, including the lights that we used to see on. Now, there are two types of radiation that we're concerned with. There's non-ionizing radiation, and there is ionizing radiation. And I have listed the radiation types that fall into these two categories on this slide. For those of you that can't see it, I'll go through it. Non-ionizing radiation are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, and UV. And the ionizing radiation is X-rays, alpha, beta, gamma rays, and UV. UV sits on the border. So part of the UV wavelengths are non-ionizing, and part of the UV wavelengths are ionizing. And what do I mean by ion? There was, there was two reasons I put this in. Dose is, is really easy to determine for ionizing radiation because we can measure the amount of energy that is deposited in material. And that picture there, by the way, is from Fukushima, and the lady is concerned her dog is contaminated. And if something should happen here in North America, when I was working for Health Canada, we also were prepared to measure people's pets. So dose to the target organ is the most important factor in determining health risk. And we'll talk more about health risks and the effect of radiation later. Two things you should remember. High dose is worse than low dose. And also the amount of time in which you receive the dose is a factor in how it affects you. If you have the same dose delivered in a very short time compared to the same dose delivered over a longer time, the effects are very different. In fact, 
if the time is long enough, there is no effect. For low doses, and again, we'll be talking about this later, there's, there's basically cancer is the worst outcome. Uh, but it doesn't happen immediately, and this graph shows this. This is the latency period after an acute exposure. You'll see from leukemia that occurs before all the other solid cancers. Because leukemia is peaking in about 6 to 12 years and solid cancers are peaking, well, maybe as late as 50 years, it's very, very difficult to look at a leukemia or a solid cancer and say, yes, this was caused by radiation. There are no biological markers in those cancer types that tell you what caused them. So it could be a natural cause for all you know. We don't know. There's no way of telling when you look at a cancer what the cause was. Uh, we'll talk more about that later.